Uh, let's bring in Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. He serves as a vice chair on the Bipartisan Gun Violence Prevention Task Force and represents the House District that includes Parkland in 2018-17 were murdered there at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And you, uh, Representative Moskowitz, graduated from that school. So uh, a lot of different ties. But more importantly, I would like you to respond to your Republican counterpart, um, not in Florida, but in Congress, who says just there's nothing we can do. Is that, is that where we are? Is there nothing that can be done? Well, thanks, Mika. Thanks for having me. No, of course there's stuff that can be done. I mean, the, the idea that there's nothing to do, that they have the defeatist attitude, is completely unacceptable. I mean, those members who are saying that have never been in a room like I was in with 17 families, extended families, on the ground praying before law enforcement and the FBI came in and told them where their child was, on what floor their child died, how many bullet holes their child had. I, I didn't hear crying. I heard screaming. It, it haunts me to this day. They, they didn't see those families then have to figure out what clothes to pick out to bury their child in or what kind of box to bury their child in. They didn't have to go back to those folks' homes and see an empty chair at the dining table? Or what do you do with your kid's room when they're no longer coming home? What do you do with that stuff? Do you box it up? Do you put it in the attic? They didn't have to make any of those decisions. They didn't have to see these families go through it. And they never have to see these families have to relive it every time another parent joins this exclusive club that seems to be growing where all you did wrong was send your kid to school and they didn't come home. We have all these parents' bills of rights going around state legislatures and up here in Washington. Shouldn't the first bill of right for a parent be that if you send your kid to school, they get to come home? And so, no, I don't take this defeatist attitude. Yeah, look, we may disagree on certain things to do about guns, but there's lots of things we can do on school safety. So an exclusive club, speaking of the NRA, that's one that a lot of uh, Republicans are concerned about insulting. I would say, are you concerned about kids dying, uh, people dying? a epidemic of mass slaughters across the country. And I was referring to a congressman from Tennessee. So this happened in his state, and this is his response. You want to legislate evil, it's just not going to happen. I, we need real revival in this country. I think, I, you know, like calling our Christian ministers and our people of faith, that's what we got to have in this country. We've got evil in this country. and. Everybody just needs to tone down the rhetoric a little bit because all that does is gin it up in both sides and then they point the finger and nothing happens. Because not, if you think Washington's going to fix this problem, it, you, you're wrong. They're not going to fix this problem. They are the problem. It doesn't concern you that other countries don't have this level of gun other violence? Other countries don't have our freedom either. We've got incredible freedom in this country. And when people abuse that freedom, that's what happens. Congressman, what do you make of that, that the price of freedom in America is that, well, once in a while, some nine-year-olds are going to get shot in their school. Once in a while, some first graders in Connecticut are going to get shot in their school. Once in a while, some shoppers at a grocery store are going to get killed in their school. Once in a while, some worshipers in a church or a synagogue are going to get shot in their safe place. What do you do with an argument like that? Yeah, well, Willie, the problem is it's not once in a while. It's, it's every day. It's yeah. every week. And so it isn't just a once in a while thing. It's all the time. Uh, and so, look, you know, they always try to spin and, and come up with, you know, well, you know, we can't stop everything. Well, that's not how emergency management works, right? We mitigate. You pass laws to mitigate. You put seatbelts in to mitigate. It's not going to stop every car accident. It's not going to prevent every death. But, hey, if we can take... A thousand deaths and make it a hundred? Isn't that a dramatic improvement? I mean, this, you know, the number one cause of death for kids now is gun violence. I, I mean, so it isn't once in a while. And this idea that it's going to come at the expense of freedom is ridiculous. In Florida, 
after Parkland, Republicans and Democrats, with the majority of Republicans, passed the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School Safety Act. We raised the age to 21. We instituted red flag laws, three-day waiting periods. By the way, those red flag laws have been used 9,000 times since Parkland in five years. No, there's no marches in the streets of Florida that people have lost their freedom. We rolled the NRA. And by the way, every single solitary Republican who voted for that bill won the re-election. Rick Scott, who signed that bill, became a U.S. Senator. And so this conversation Jeez. is totally ridiculous. Yes, the one thing the Congressman said that is true, yes, Washington is the problem. It is broken. But let's be part of the solution. Don't just throw our hands up and say, woe is me. Let's get to work and figure out where we can agree on school safety. And where we don't agree on certain issues, let's figure out around the edges where we can make some sort of progress. Yes, Washington is in an incremental sort of position now. We don't do big things. That's okay. I'll move the ball five yards on this, and they'll take another five yards and another five yards, because every life we save as we try to mitigate against this issue is progress. It seems to me that on this issue, uh, uh, Reverend Al, I mean, you may be a politician who, for some reason, the NRI, NRA info or wherever they get their info is that, oh, this law wouldn't help. This wouldn't stop it. Uh, why not try? Why, why not when try? When it's come to our, our children, why not try? Why not try? Because they really don't want to legislate anything that would hurt whatever it is they're about and their supporters are about. And one of the things that, that I really want to address, the distortion that uh, somehow the Bible tells you to just pray against evil and don't do anything. The whole Bible is full of stories of people that fought the evil in their time. So what is he talking about, that we can't legislate evil? Well, did Moses do that in, in terms of slavery with Pharaoh? I mean, it is a distortion of Scripture. You're supposed to do good work, not just pray for good work. And, and I think that for him to uh, try to use religion as a cop-out is an insult to those of us that are true believers. It seems to me, uh, Congressman Moskowitz, that even Kevin McCarthy didn't have words about this um, and it just I don't know it, it seems we could do better and our leaders can do better on a separate top topic congressman you sent a letter to top house Republicans yesterday calling on them to launch an investigation into one of the people Donald Trump recently called a top threat to the United States here is what Trump said at his Waco rally on Saturday I was asked the other day and I took a little heat for it they said who's our biggest threat is it China, sir? Uh, is it Russia? I said, no, our biggest threat are high-level politicians that work in the United States government, like Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, Biden, Justice Department. I mean, the hating on America never stops. The hating on America's military, you got Republican senators saying you wish they were more like Russians, the hating on our intel community, the hating on... And, and now Donald Trump saying that Mitch McConnell, minority leader, is a greater threat to the world than she, or that Nancy Pelosi, who's not even speaker anymore, a greater threat to the world than Vladimir Putin. It's twisted and distorted. So, so tell us, real Congressman, about the letter you sent to the House Republican leadership uh, regarding those comments. Well, thanks, Joe. I mean, look, you know, I sit on the Oversight Committee. You know, we've been, it's been a flea circus the last couple of months. These guys are not organized. They're, they're not, they have no plan. You know, they try, they, they're looking for the next, you know, Benghazi or Terry Schiavo, and, the, you know, they have not been able to find it because there's nothing there. But, but Comer and Jim Jordan are getting all of their cues from Donald Trump and coordinating with the Trump campaign. So my thought was, well, look, Don, here's the former president of the United States. You know, he gets classified information. He keeps some of this classified information in drawers with his bronzer. So if he's saying, Mitch McConnell, an 81-year-old who just finished physical therapy, you know, and just got out of rehab from that, if they're saying that he is a threat to the United States, then, you know, we're wasting more time on committees investigating other nonsense. I mean, let's see if Donald Trump is right. What does is, what is Mitch McConnell know? When did he know it? Let's, let's have those questions. And so, you know, you can't be the president of the United States and just come on and say the former majority leader of the Senate, the minor, current minority leader of the Senate, is the greatest threat to America, and just pretend that that didn't happen. And so, you know, look, uh, yep. Jim Jordan and Comer, they want to have all these hearings. Let's have a hearing on Mitch McConnell. All right, Florida Congressman Jerry Moskowitz, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it.